Hey everyone, so recently some people have said that they missed my animated story time videos, so I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. I thought I would tell you the real reason about how I was able to become a millionaire in my 20s. You see, I was thinking back the other day to a plane trip I took from Los Angeles to New Zealand in business class. As you can see, I was flying with a sore throat that day because this was back before COVID was a thing. I was 28 at the time of the flight. My flight manager Mike was walking through the aisle, ticking off everybody's name from his clipboard as he was welcoming everybody onto the flight. And as he came up to me, his eyes darted up from his clipboard and he was like, and by now, after taking a lot of flights, I was super used to this sort of thing. So I was just like, hello, it is lovely to meet you. And he was just like, yeah, yeah, kia ora. Welcome on board, it's, a, it's great to have you. And in that moment, I knew exactly what was going on. He was standing there going, okay, here's this young girl. I'm confused, I don't understand. What is she doing in business class? I was clearly not flying for work, given I was dressed so casually, and I was flying by myself so no parents in sight to be mooching off of, and he could see that I had elite status on the clipboard and that I flew a lot. Well, over that flight we chatted and built up a rapport, until finally, just after breakfast, as we were about to land we were all saying our farewells, and Mike finally built up enough courage to just come out and be like, okay Sarah, I have to ask, how are you here? And as we talked, it became apparent that Mike had just assumed that there had to be someone else out there paying for my seat, that perhaps it was my employer or more likely my parents. But as I said to him, nope, I was 100% paying for it myself. And Mike was quite stunned because the flights were definitely not cheap and for this flight, I'd actually paid with cash. And so he said to me, okay, you have to tell me, how does a 28 year old like you have the ability to be able to buy a business class seat? And I said to him, look, Mike, my parents may have not given me my millions of dollars, but my parents are the reason why I have millions of dollars today. And so while they may have not bought me my business class seat, they are pretty much the reason why I am sitting here, especially my father. Because you see, over the years, while my parents were not millionaires themselves, my father became very interested in millionaires and billionaires and read a lot of books that they had written about what they did differently compared to others. And so one day on a walk when I was seven years old, my father decided to share with me the secret that I needed to know if I wanted to become a millionaire in my 20s. Growing up, my dad worked hard. He had a small business manufacturing and selling commercial lights. There were many days that I didn't even see him because he would wake up at the crack of dawn and then come home late in the evening after I'd gone to bed. But even though my dad worked hard, he still tried to spend time with me. And one of those ways was going on long walks where we would chat. And one of my dad's favorite questions was this. Sarah, what do you want to be when you grow up? Like cool kids, my answer changed every time he asked me. Sometimes I wanted to work for Nintendo and make video games. Some days I wanted to be a doctor and some days I wanted to be a pilot. But this day I said to my dad, hmm, when I grow up, I want to be a millionaire. And you know, at this point, I bet most people's parents would scoff and they'd be like, look, Sarah, I don't think you understand. Being a millionaire, it's not a profession. You don't just get to choose to become a millionaire. Pick an actual job that you can train for, please. But luckily for me, my dad ain't like most other dads. And instead, he laughed and said to me, all right, Sarah, you want to be a millionaire? Well, let me ask you a question. How do you become a millionaire? Um, well, I guess I need to make a million dollars. Well, yes, yes you do, Sarah. So how do you make a lot of money? How do you make a million dollars? Oh, come on, Dad, I'm seven years old, I'm just a kid. I don't know how to do that. Well, it's true, my dad laughed. But you know, Sarah, most adults don't know how to do it either. Nobody taught me how to do it. And so I had to learn this lesson much later in life. The sooner you know it, the easier it will be for you to become rich. So my dad took a detour to a gardening store and he pointed at the wind chimes hanging. And he said to me, you see those wind chimes, Sarah? What do they remind you of? I instantly recognized those wind chimes. A few weeks prior, I'd been given a craft book and one of the crafts was how to make wind chimes out of popsicle sticks. And it looked very similar to the wind chime in the window. And dad said, wow, those wind chimes, they're selling for $40. How do you think they got those wind chimes for sale? And I paused and I was like, um, I don't know. Did they make them? No, they didn't make them, Sarah. They bought them from someone else. 
They might have bought those wind chimes for $20 from someone else who made them, and now they're selling them for a higher price of $40. Now, Sarah, I have another question for you. Each week, you help your mother with the dishes, and you clean your room, and you take out the trash. And how much money do you make for doing all of those chores? Um, I get $2 pocket money? Right, and it probably takes you about 20 minutes each day to do all of your chores. So that is about two hours a week. What is two divided by two? Hmm, it's one. That's right, so that means right now, you're earning $1 an hour doing chores. Now, Sarah, I have another question for you. I know you made a wind chime like that. How long did it take you to make it? Well, I spent last week doing it. Yes, you did. You worked on it each day after school and you spent two hours on it. Well, what's five times two? I had to think a little bit longer for that one. I think it's 10. That's right, it is. That means you spent 10 hours making that wind chime. Well, Sarah, now I have another question for you. This garden store, I bought this wind chime for $20 from someone. Well, imagine if you had sold them your wind chime. You would have made $20 for 10 hours of work. And what is 20 divided by 10? I stared at my dad blankly. Nobody had taught me how to go beyond multiples of 12. My dad laughed and he said, 20 divided by 10 is two. That means, Sarah, that instead of doing chores for $1 an hour, you could have been making wind chimes and making $2 an hour. That is double what you're making doing chores. If you had made wind chimes, you wouldn't have had to do chores anymore and you would make more money. And now obviously this was a simplification, but hopefully you get his point. He was teaching me the first lesson that I needed to know about money. And that is this, most people earn money by completing tasks for others. Maybe they go into an office and fill out spreadsheets. Or perhaps they work in a retail store and spend their time taking payment from customers. Or maybe they're an engineer and they go to work each day and build planes. Either way, it's all the same. But as my dad pointed out, while this might make a decent, safe living, it does not make you a millionaire. To become a millionaire, rather than going to work and building things for someone else so that they can sell them for a profit, you need to make the things yourself so that you can sell them for a profit. And so little seven-year-old Sarah was like, aha, I have figured it out. So the way that I become a millionaire is I should make wind chimes and sell them to the garden store. And my dad burst out laughing because I was so, so close. But I had one more money lesson that I had to understand if I wanted to become a millionaire while I was young. And so my dad was like, okay, I have one final question for you, Sarah. Your sister Melissa, what do you think she'd rather do? Do you think she'd rather be paid a dollar an hour to do chores around the house? Or do you think she'd rather be paid a dollar an hour to do crafts? And I was like, well, she'd rather do crafts. I'd rather do crafts. Exactly. So Sarah, if Melissa is willing to do a dollar an hour for chores, imagine if you offered her a dollar an hour to make wind chimes each week. If it took her 10 hours to make a wind chime, you could pay her $10. And then you could go to the garden store and sell the wind chime for $20. What is 20 minus $10? Again, I had to think that one through a bit. Uh, I think it's $10. You're right. If you sold it to the garden store, you'd be making $10 for each wind chime. But I was so confused because I was like, Dad, I don't understand. How on earth is this a good idea? Previously, when I was making the wind chimes myself, I was making $20. But now that Melissa's making them, I'm making just $10. How does making less money make me more rich? And my dad just grinned and he was like, hmm, so Sarah, your best friend at school, Jen, how do you think that she would prefer to earn her pocket money? Do you think she'd rather do chores? Or do you think she'd rather do crafts? And I was like, well, she likes making crafts too. Exactly, Sarah. So now you have two people making you wind chimes. Melissa, who makes you one wind chime for $10, and Jen, who makes you another wind chime for $10. And then you go to the garden store and sell both for $20 each. You'll make a $10 profit on each one, which when added together means each week you'd be making $20. That's double what you'd be making doing chores at home for mum and I. And do you know what is the best part, Sarah? No, what? Because Melissa and Jen are making these wind chimes for you, you don't have to do anything. You can play video games and each week you'll still make $20. And so it was in that moment that everything truly clicked. 
The way to get rich isn't just to go buy the materials so that I can make a wind chime and sell it. It is to also use my pocket money to buy other people's time and get them to make the wind chimes for me. Yes, Sarah, that's the secret. Hire other people or use tools to make the products or services to sell for you so that you don't have to spend your time doing it. This has a name, it's called passive income. Most people work to get their money, but the wealthy have figured out ways to make money make itself. And that, Sarah, that is how you become a millionaire. And as we walked home that day, I finally understood the true pathway to becoming a millionaire. But I also understood something else. I understood why my dad had told me that nobody had taught it to him and he had to figure it out himself. Because you think about it, school teaches us to do the opposite of what my dad told me. At school, what do you do? You go into class each day and spend time completing tasks assigned to you and in exchange, you get rewarded with good grades. Wow, that sounds an awful lot like a job, doesn't it? You go to work and spend time completing tasks assigned to you and in exchange, you get rewarded with a salary. There are just two problems though with the strategy, isn't there? The first problem, you only have 24 hours in a day and for some of that, you need to sleep. Exchanging your time to earn money will mean most people will never become a millionaire fast because your income is not scalable. It has a ceiling. The second problem is that since it is you selling your time, it is you that has to come in and do the job. You can't outsource it to either technology or a person. And if you think about it, that's exactly what school makes us do as well. If you were to hire a friend who is better at math than you to complete your math homework, instead of being applauded for being efficient with time, you'd be punished for cheating. But luckily for me, unlike most people who only have school to teach them how to earn money, I had my father who taught me a different way. And so when I turned 16 and all my friends went off to get a part-time job, I instead did something different. I started an e-commerce business, which as I shared on this channel, I've been scaling ever since. Like most people, I could have used my energy to find a job to exchange my time for dollars, but instead I used my energy to find products that I could make and sell. And so because of that, over time, I've been able to outsource all aspects of this business to either humans or apps. And so now, unlike a job, this business is running by itself 24 hours a day, making me money while I sleep. And so I said to Mike, while my father may have not bought me this plane ticket, he is indeed the reason why I am sitting at the front of the plane instead of in the back. I'll admit it, I find it so baffling. There are so many people out there that are afraid of investing their money into building a business because they're afraid of losing it. And yet they are more than happy to exclusively earn their money by exchanging the most valuable resource that we all have, which is our time. There is a reason that people like me want to buy it from you by hiring you and that's because millionaires understand that there are always ways to scale and earn more money. But the one resource that you can never earn back once you spend it is your time. And each day that you spend doing something that you don't want to do is a day that you can never get back. So, did this video inspire you? If it did, please hit subscribe and click that little notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my videos. And if you'd like to learn more about my scalable sources of income, then you should be sure to watch my video, five income streams that I built in my 20s that makes me over $1,000 a day. So go ahead, watch my next video, and I'll see you over there.